Meanwhile, the Mets have lost eight of their last 12. Mickey Calloway, Jason Vargas, both fined for their roles in that incident with a reporter. After the loss to the Cubs yesterday, Calloway verbally attacking a reporter. Vargas, a physical threat. So earlier today, Calloway met with the media in a bizarre sequence that had two different sessions. I mean, every, you know, Billy Martin punched a reporter one time. You know, I mean, it, it's just part of part of this game. You know, um, it, it's something that uh, you know. I, hey, I, I'm a passionate guy about baseball, and uh, I'm a tough competitor. And uh, sometimes you'll see it with the umpires. Sometimes you'll see it with the players. And 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 the thing is, is you guys don't need to see it uh, directed towards you guys. That that's you guys have a job to do. I understand that. I've always understood that. Um, and, and you guys don't need it directed at you. Are you sorry? I, I, I like I said, I, I can I can control my reactions better. Absolutely. You know, I understand that uh, I got some feedback that uh, you know it, that I wanted you guys to know that in my my meeting with, with Tim, I apologize for my reaction. I, should, I shouldn't. I regret it. I regret the uh, you know the distractions it's caused to the team, and uh, you know, like I said earlier, it's something that uh, we'll learn from. Um, so. You know, it, it's something I'm not proud of. I'm not proud of the distraction. I'm not proud of what I what I did to Tim. Um, you know, so you know, for that, I'm definitely sorry. Manager, usually the fall guy, not saying it's all his fault. He has a year to go on his contract as Callaway after this season. Going forward, though, and we had heard rumblings a while ago, should the Mets move on from him as manager? Would they be better off doing that sooner rather than later? So I, I think they would be better off without him. But here's the caveat. Okay. Who do they have? They don't have anybody that they can put in there right now. And I think that's why he still has his job. Because there's no way that you can sit here and say that just the way he's handled the situation, that that's who you want representing your ball club. I, for me, I'm watching that video. And, and when, when the reporter says, are you sorry? And there's a stammering, a stuttering. And then it's, well, my actions, blah, blah, blah. It's, I am sorry. I made I'm a sorry, mistake. I apologize, I screwed up, I don't want it. Right. But but the thing about it is, who are you going to put in there? Yeah. You know, is, is Joe Girardi going to come out right, right now in this <laughs> situation? Or You know, that, that yeah. that's the reality of it. And they don't have anybody that they could replace where everybody would say, yeah, this is great. So I think he has it by default. And the more time he gets, either he can right the ship or he can continue to go spiral. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and what makes it tough is pitching was his specialty, and that's what yeah. their question Well, he was my about. pitching coach when yeah. I was in Cleveland, right. so I had a great relationship with Mickey, so I, I, I know him really well. Uh, but to see what's gone down uh, with the New York Mets this season has been – Mm -hmm. It's been tough to watch. I think there was so much excitement coming into this season, especially the moves they made the offseason, bringing over guys like Robbie Cano, right? You got Wilson Ramos, Edwin Diaz, right? I mean, expectations were high again for the New York Mets, and now it just kind of seems like after this blow-up that it kind of seems like they're, they're, they're back at where they were a couple years ago, looking for that leader moving forward. And obviously, I think that that atmosphere that they've created over there does not breed winning. I don't know if Mickey Callaway's the guy. I don't know who's the guy over there. But they need to do something over there to change up the just the karma, just the overall aura yep. over there, because it doesn't seem like it's a place you'd want to be playing. Right. And ownership did apologize, uh, but I know that's different than him uh, apologizing, as they are five games below 500. All right, let's welcome in our MLB insider, John Morosi, from a reporter standpoint. Uh, John, it's good to see you. How, how do you think the Mets uh, should have handled this differently? How could they have handled it any better? Well, good evening, Chris. Uh, I would say this. Uh, certainly now the Mets, of course, as you mentioned, they, they did find both Callaway and Vargas here. But to me, that's secondary to how they handled it today. And there was really no apology at all from Vargas. And with Callaway, as, as Eric mentioned, it took him two tries to get it right. Uh, which makes you wonder how he really felt. And so th that, to me, is, is the key question here. And I, I think for the Mets as well, you would like to, as a professional observing it, it's your job to maintain a, a positive environment around your club. And, and there was a way to handle this yesterday and certainly even earlier today that would have quelled the story a bit, and the Mets simply didn't do that. So I, I think that, to me, is an essential part of the job right now. And uh, as a reporter... I was disappointed in general. The fine is one thing. I, I'm not worried about the fine. I, I'm worried more about the, the way that the respect is shown or not shown to the media who covers the team every day. And certainly in New York, there are a lot of those reporters. Now, Mickey did get it right in saying that certainly there is that give and take and there are, there are certainly unavoidable 
encounters that are maybe not uh, collaborative between the media and, and managers. Mm -hmm. And I got to say, Chris, I had one back in 08, and Nick was partially to blame for it. Now, well, Nick, you did nothing wrong, <laughs> but I'm, well, here we go. Let's roll the tape here. August of 2008, I was covering this game for the Tigers, uh, uh, the Detroit Free Press. Nick hits his walk-off home run. Now, I go to the Tigers clubhouse and sit with the great future Hall of Famer, Jim Leland, and I asked him if Nate Robertson was, would make his next start. Now, Nate had started this game, and it was like 5-1 Detroit, then it was 5-2, 5-3, 5-4, 5-5. Nick hits his home run that basically ends the Tigers' season. And I asked Jim Leland about how Nate Robertson had pitched earlier in the game and if he'd make his next start. Jim basically said, and I'm paraphrasing here, John, I would greatly appreciate it if you would to withdraw yourself from the manager's office right now with your recorder and excuse yourself from the premises right now, to which I obliged. And as, as, it, as Nick and Eric both know, there's a hallway that leads from the manager's office down to the clubhouse there at, at the visiting clubhouse at yeah. Comiskey, now uh, Guaranteed Rate Field, where basically every player in the Tigers clubhouse could look up and say, who was it? that got the skipper a little upset. And they saw 26-year-old John Morosi walking with my head down like a hose Morosi. What did he say this time? So again, now the next day, to wrap up the story quickly, Jim did apologize. I apologized to him, said, you know what, there's probably a better time to ask it, and we moved on. And it's a little harder to do now. Of course, back mm -hmm. then, there were not quite as many television networks, social media wasn't a thing. It was harder to move past things, but that I think speaks to maybe how well Jim handled it the next day back then and maybe Mickey probably could have taken a page from the great skipper, Jim Leland, uh, today. All right, uh, I'm, I'm going to politely ask you to leave the premises from this show. <laughs> Just so we have time that. for the I kid, because I care. Actually, more from JP Thanks, later Nick. on uh, the Yankees Thanks, maybe Chris. making a trade. <laughs>